Hi everyone, I'm Lauren with Stitching in the Stacks. And thank you so much to everyone who's been watching my videos, who's liked and subscribed and commented. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry I haven't been on in a while. I have just gotten busy with life. But I'm back and even though I haven't been there in a while, that just means I have more to show you because I've been busy cross-stitching. Um, I've also been busy with wedding related stuff. I did, I think I found the dress. I'm really excited. It's so pretty when it moves, it sparkles. It's, I'm excited. Um, I've also, I'm working on finishing up my save the dates this weekend so I can get those out to my friends and family. I'm really excited. Um, I'm not going to tell you what they look like, but they're going to be a little bookish, so yay. Um, school's been kind of hectic, hectic as well. Um, we are going to be going virtual, so starting back after Thanksgiving break, the kids will just be online for a few weeks. We're not completely sure how long that will last, so... Um, there's kind of a lot of unknowns, and it's a little stressful just making that adjustment right now. Um, Case-wise, our school's been doing pretty good. It's just the kids are doing pretty well. It's just we have had so many staff out that um, we just can't do it anymore. So it'll be okay, and I think it'll work out just fine. Um, another exciting thing we've had is this last week we had an author visit with our first and second graders virtually. So the author, V.T. Vidania, um, the author of Astrid and Apollo, came and met with us. So the kids just love that and they just think it's so cool when they get to meet authors. So let's hop right into cross-stitch. So um, I have a couple of FFOs. If you can see my pile here. Um, the first one, I think it's going to stay at my house. It was Pumpkin Patch, and that's by Annie B's Folk Art. And I got this frame just from Michael's. I love the funky um, pumpkins. And now the pattern did call for different colors, and I kind of adjusted because for the striped pumpkin, it had ecru and like a dark gray, and I just, I wanted it to be bolder, so I went with like Blanc and um, 310 for black. So I love how it turned out, and I'm really proud of it. Um, I wasn't sure at first about the simple frame. I thought maybe I wanted to do like a buffalo check ribbon of some sort, but... That just wasn't looking right either and kind of distracted from it. So I think I'm going to just keep it as is. But if you have other suggestions, I'm happy to hear them as well. So that was by Ann Beasy Folk Art. Um, another pumpkin finish I have is um, Pumpkin Pick and Truck by Homespun Elegance. So I use primarily called for colors. I think I substituted a few. And then it drove me crazy. I got the called for one for the leaf banner. And I have absolutely no clue where it went. It disappeared. So I had to sub something for that as well. So, but I love all the variegated. And I really especially love the color of that truck. I um, wasn't sure at first about the truck. Because when I just held up the Fancy Floss, I think it's a week's work, it looked almost like brown to me. But it, it does turn out like a red rusty truck now that it's all stitched up. So what I did to finish this is um, this piece I got at um, Joann's. And it actually has... Um, like a leather piece behind this that had some leaves or said harvest blessing or something on it. So this is actually like a leather piece in between the metal. Um, and what I did is I ended up just thumbtacking my fabric right on there. Um, and I just left it like this because um, I'm not sure if I want to keep it like this forever, and this is going to be a gift, so I thought if they wanted to frame it somewhere else, they could take it off, but I think it looks pretty cute. It's got a little twine hang on it, um, or it'd be cute if you just set it down and let it sit on a 
bookshelf or a counter someplace. So um, that was pumpkin picking truck. Super cute. The other one I actually finished in the same way. And, and that is Harvest Home by Manny Didana. So this is how that one turned out as well. And this one also comes with a little pin cushion that has like the pumpkin and some fl uh, flowers behind it. I didn't do that yet, but that would be a cute little small to work on too in the future. So this one I'm going to give to my mom when I see her next week for Thanksgiving. Okay, so those were all of my FFOs. I'm really proud. I I'm horrible at remembering the FFO things. I have a ton of projects that need to go in frames or be finished. So I did some. Yay me. Um, other whips. Let's see. Oh, before I get to whips. Look at this cute Thanksgiving card my grandma gave me. So pretty. I love fall. It's my favorite. So all the pumpkins is what I'm about. So let's see. Whips. The first is, Calvin doesn't believe me, but I did work a little bit on my Napoleon piece. I did um, some of the blacks down in this area. So we're getting there. He's worried that I haven't been working on it much, but I have big plans for it because um, I'm gonna be doing School of Magical Stitches in literature next year. And this is going to be my full coverage piece that I've declared and that I will work on for some of their challenges. So the School of Magical Stitches in Literature, I believe, started with Harry Potter themed. And so it's a Facebook group in which back then people were sorted into the different Hogwarts houses. And each week you would or each month you'd read the books and you'd have different stitching challenges. Well, next year, 2021, is going to be Percy Jackson themed of Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief and the Olympians. And I am so excited. I love all those books. They're by Rick Riordan. They're just really great reads. Um, so I can't wait. And of course, I'm going to get involved with that group again. I didn't do it this year. I was going to, but they read like the Disney villains books and I just wasn't that into it. So, but I'm really excited for Percy Jackson. So I'm excited to get back involved in that and to participate in the challenges. And I just can't wait because you know me, I'm Yes, yeah, itching in the stack. So obviously books and cross stitch, my jam. So yeah, so Napoleon's my declared full coverage. So anytime one of the challenges have to do with my full coverage piece, I will be working on that. I hoping that I have enough of it still left because let's see, I'll pull it back out so you can see it because I don't know how much I have left. I have maybe two pages here. And then I have all of the top to do. So there's, I think, five pages across the top. So there's still quite a bit. I need his head, obviously, in the top part of the horse. So <laughs> I think I think I'll be okay because you can just have one full coverage piece for the whole year. So hopefully that one will work out and I will get that one done. Um, I also started, I didn't get very far on this so you can tell that's gonna be a pumpkin or two and this is from punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine the fall one and it is yep crows in the pumpkin patch and that is by Teresa Miller so that'll be really cute when it when I'm done with it, and my fiance, he really loves crows, so I think he'll like that too, so. I don't have a ton done on that, but a cute start, so. I don't know when I'm gonna pick this one back up yet, but. I also am way close. I just have one color to fill in on pick of the patch. 
And this is by Belinda Carr's Nace of Blue Ribbons Design. And this was in um, the Fall Just Cross Stitch magazine. So, sorry about the glare there. So, I just need to fill in like a tannish color on the path and in the pumpkins to finish that up. And next time I'm hoping to show you that all finished. I bought like a tin pumpkin. It's like a coppery color. And then it's like like a bucket shaped. I don't know how to explain it. But then I put some cute fall foliage in it too. So I'm going to see if I can find a magnet and magnet my cross stitch on it. And I think that'll be really cute. So I'm not sure if anyone has suggestions on where you can get good strong magnets for stuff like that. I would love advice because I haven't done any kind of finishes like that before but that's my plan. My next one I'm really excited about this is a Christmas present for my brother and his girlfriend and it is called Farmhouse Noel and sorry it's still in the crop in the Q-step Q-snap here. It's by Marcy Pashong of Calico Confectionery. So it's got the farmhouse, a barn, Christmas tree. Let me see if I can find the finished picture on the pattern. And then um, it says a farmhouse Noel on it and it has a cute little border around it, some snow and stuff. Um, I'm not sure though if I want to do farmhouse Noel or if I'd rather like put his last name on there. I haven't decided yet on that, so, hmm, not sure. Or if anyone else has any ideas, shoot them in the comments below. And then, let's see, so next is the plans. So I'm hoping to finish this up for them, to give it to them by Christmas. When I am done with that, I want to jump back on, because I haven't worked on this in months, my snow village. Oh, it's really wrinkly. I'm sorry, guys. So I have the main part done. Well, I don't have the eyes. <laughs> I didn't do the French knots yet. I think I'm going to do those all at the end. I have the skate shop, snowflake stand. So there's a bunch more little stands and shops all around the main banner in it. So I want to work on that, finish that up as well, because... I'm in the mood for some winter stitching now, so I can't wait. So yeah, my plans are Farmhouse Noel, Snow Village, and we'll see how far I get. I'm hoping I will be able to show you again what I've been working on soon. I know I'm going to be doing a ton of stitching this week because I only work on Monday. I have the rest of Thanksgiving week off. So I'm hoping to get lots of stitching time in and also finish up all my Christmas shopping so I don't have to do any of it in December because that would just be awesome because I don't want to deal with all the crowds, especially with COVID going on right now. So yeah. Um, What else have I been up to? I have lately been obsessed with two TV shows. Um, Alex Ryder, I just finished watching the whole first season, love it, that's on Prime, and I loved the books back, way back in the day when I was in, like, high school, I read the Alex Ryder books, he's, like, basically a teenage James Bond, like, he's a teenage spy, um, and it's interesting, though, that the, um, TV series starts with the second book. Maybe it's because um, someone else did a movie before. The movie was okay. It wasn't that great. But the TV show is just really phenomenal. It's very suspenseful. I can't wait for the next season to come out soon. Um, and I am also have been watching religiously The Mandalorian every Friday. And that one is on Disney+. Plus. So me and my fiancé... I wait till he gets home from work at 7 to watch it. So I have a few hours that I'm just like, come on, come on, come on, get home. I want to see what happens. And we've been watching that. Um, 
The last episode kind of disappointed me, though, because the one before it teased us with making with that he'd meet Ahsoka Tano, which she's from the Clone Wars, so it's exciting when you get to see characters from the past. But I kind of figured it would happen that they were going to just tease us with it and we wouldn't get to see her right away in the next episode. And I was right, so I think I need to watch it again and watch it knowing that I won't get to see her the whole episode and just kind of get over that. <laughs> so, but... Yeah, those are my TV shows that I've been into lately. Um, if you have any suggestions, if you like those shows, other shows that are similar that you think I might like, um, drop those in the comments as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about books as well. Um, let's see. I don't have many of my books here with me right now because I've left a lot of them at school. I didn't really take much home with me this weekend. And, yeah, so yeah, I've lumped them out to people, but we can still talk about books. You'll just have to look up what they look like on your own. So, um, the first one is uh, the Astro and Apollo series. So, that is by B.T. Bedania, and this is the author that came in and visited virtually on Microsoft Teams with my school, with my first and second graders. So, the Astro and Apollo series is in early reader chapter book series for um, like first, second, third graders. And it's about Asher and Apollo, which are two Hmong twins. And they just do cool everyday kind of stuff. In one book, they go fishing, um, they go camping. There's one about Hmong New Year, which this is kind of the time of year at the end of the harvest year is Hmong New Year, so happy Hmong New Year to my Hmong friends. Um, another great book by a Hmong author is The Most Beautiful Thing. I believe that one dropped in October. It's by Kao Kalia Yang, and I really wish I had this one with me, but I lent it to another teacher. It has just really gorgeous, gorgeous illustrations, and um, it's about the special relationship between a young girl and caring and how she's caring for her grandma. But seriously, beautiful, beautiful book. And Kao Kalia Yang has other great picture books as well. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, my fourth graders especially have been really obsessed with Front Desk. And in this book, Mia Tang um, and her parents, they become managers at a motel and Mia often has to man the front desk while her parents spend basically all day and night cleaning and working their butt off um, for the owner Mr. Yao and in it um, her parents they start hiding some of their immigrant friends in some of the rooms there is a character who is a regular, a weekly, that lives in the motel that gets in trouble with the cops. There's just a lot of um, interesting things that happen in this story, and I really highly suggest it. Um, my, the kids really enjoy it, and they just came out with a sequel called Three Keys that I just started on audiobook, so I'm excited to continue that story, and I get to listen to it while I stitch, too, which is always fun. So this one's middle grade, so I would say third grade and up. Um, I did read a YA. I haven't read a YA book in a while. I read Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar, and the first chapter kind of shocked me because I haven't read YA in so long. Like I totally forgot like how much like YA books like they have very strong language and there's sex and drugs and I'm like whoa, but I mean that's teens are into that because it's a way for them to kind of imagine that like teens aren't that crazy but it's a way for them to kind of picture and kind of experiment without doing all the crazy things if if that makes any sense to you <laughs> but um Felix Ever After it was a really interesting story um the main char 
Dr. Felix is a trans teen who goes to art school and he is a really close best friend that he practically lives with. He's very supportive of him. But, um, unfortunately, this horrible incident happens at his school. So when they walk into the school, there's this beautiful gallery space where they portray um, different artwork from students at the school. And it's summer class, so they don't have anything up there. But one day they walk in on their way to class and there's pictures everywhere of Felix, but um, of him before he transitioned. So Felix is trans, so it's pictures of him before he transitioned and he's dead named. And that's just really, really horrible, horrible thing to happen to him. And yeah, so Felix Ever After is really good. I didn't see, you find out eventually who did it and I did not see that coming. So I think it was a good book and I would recommend that one as well. Uh, what else have I been reading? If you're looking for some reads with, for Thanksgiving coming up, um, Storyline Online has Turkey Trouble on it and uh, who reads it? Now I can't think of who the reader is, but he does such a good job. It's cute because the turkey doesn't want to get eaten for Thanksgiving. He dresses up as all these different um, farm animals and it's really funny. Another great one is I always like to read Balloons Over Broadway by Melissa Sweet. It tells the story of Tony Sarg who um, is the puppeteer, the toy maker behind um, the Macy's Day Parade. So he had the idea to make the giant balloons that we know and love in the Macy's Day Parade, which I'm looking forward to this year. It'll be something fun to watch, and I think it'll be really interesting because they're still going to have the balloons, even though um, there won't be spectators there to watch. They're still going to have balloons, but they're going to be driven by robots, so that's kind of cool. So those are some cool Thanksgiving reads. Um... November is also Native American Heritage Month. Some of the books I would suggest for that would be We Are Grateful. Um, it's a Cherokee story that tells about the different seasons. I also really enjoy Bow Wow Pow Wow by Brenda Child. It's just fun. And Fry Bread by Kevin Noble Maylard, though it makes me really hungry for fry bread. Um, I actually made my teachers a flyer with these books and a bunch more great books. If you're an educator or you're just interested in more Native American Heritage Month reads, um, comment with your email and I can send you a copy of the flyer I made. Or if you're looking for even more books for um, by Native American authors or about Native American people, you can check out Debbie Reese's blog. So, yeah, there's just so many great books. I also, oh, on Netflix, I've been watching Bookmarks, um, which is a show hosted by Marley Diaz in which it celebrates books by and about um, black people. And it's kind of a really cool one for kids. It's something more educational and fun. For the kids, I don't know, you know what I mean? Sometimes there's just so much fluff and goofiness that you want something a little more, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say now. It's getting toward the end of my floss tube where I'm not making much sense. <laughs> but um, I do suggest bookmarks on Netflix for kids as well. And yeah, there's just so many great reads. Tell me what you're reading too. I'd love to hear and love suggestions. But I think I'm going to sign off now before I make even less sense. So you guys have happy stitching, happy reading. I'm so grateful for all of you. And take care of yourselves.